There's no doubt that Kmart has been one of the biggest and most successful American retailers during the 20th century. Renowned for its blue light special, at its peak it operated over 2,400 stores with 350,000 employees, bringing in an impressive $37 billion in revenue. But today, Kmart has only a few stores remaining in the U.S. So why did this once mighty retail empire crumble? Let's find out. To understand why Kmart failed, it's important to explore its inception, its rise to become one of the nation's largest retailers, and its slow deterioration that led to its fall. Kmart traces its roots all the way back to 1897, when Sebastian Sparing Kresge founded the S.S. Kresge Company. Growing up on a farm in Kresgeville, PA, which was named after his ancestors, Kresge clerked at a grocery store following his graduation. After two years at the grocery store, he went on to work as a traveling salesman. During that time, he met variety store pioneer Frank Woolworth and sold to all of his 19 stores at the time. He also met his future business partner, John McCrory. Kresge saved $8,000 and used it to go into business with Mr. McCrory. Together, they opened two five and 10 cent stores, one in Memphis and one in Detroit. In 1899, he traded his half interest in the Memphis store for full ownership of the Detroit store. Then Kresge partnered with his brother-in-law, Charles J. Wilson, for seven years, during which time they opened Kresge and Wilson stores in seven cities. In 1912, he incorporated the SS Kresge Company with 85 stores, becoming publicly traded in 1918. By 1924, Kresge was worth $375 million, which is $6.7 billion today. And he owned real estate worth about $100 million, or $1.8 billion today. The company's growth in the 1920s was spectacular. The number of stores rose from 257 in 1924 to 597 stores in 1929. Despite store closings during the Great Depression, the number of stores rose to 682 by 1940. During the early 1960s, Kmart was born. Under the leadership of CEO Harry Cunningham, the SS Kresge Company started to focus on discounted prices. Cunningham was criticized by some, including Kresge shareholders, who said he could possibly destroy the company. Despite the backlash, Cunningham founded the first Kmart store in the early 1960s, just six months before the first Walmart opened. This Kmart location had been planned to be a Kresge store, but at the last minute was turned into the new Kmart concept. The first ground-up, full-sized Kmart opened in 1962 in Garden City, Michigan. Cunningham had been inspired by his 1961 visit to Ann and Hope, a pioneer in self-serve department stores, or stores where the customer can choose their own products, then check out. This concept goes way back to the 1910s, with Piggly Weekly being the very first self-serve grocery store. Before that, a customer would give a list of items to a clerk, who would then collect the items throughout the store. Interestingly, Sam Walton had visited Ann and Hope that same year, which influenced him in creating Walmart. After those first few Kmarts were opened, more locations quickly followed. Cunningham even took the risky step of eliminating the stock dividend to fuel growth of these new stores. By 1966, Kmart had 167 stores and became the nation's largest discounter. This happened to be the same year that Kresge passed away at the age of 99. The following decade, Kmart went on to put a number of competing retailers out of business, and by 1977, the company changed its name to Kmart Corporation. By 1981, store number 2000 was opened. In fact, Kmart was so big that it was the second largest retailer overall in the United States after Sears. It turns out that Cunningham's vision had been a fantastic success. But by the late 1980s, Kmart's fortunes began to change. So what was the reason for the decline? There were several issues that led to the collapse of Kmart. One was that the company's management didn't take smaller competitors like Walmart seriously. After Cunningham had retired from his position as CEO, he was chairman of the board as well as president. He eventually resigned as president and gave up his chairmanship in the early 1970s, though he remained as a director and a member of various board committees. While on the board, he had repeatedly advised Kmart's leadership on just what a serious threat he thought Sam Walton was, but it took them a long time until they began to take Cunningham seriously. And the Walmart threat was quite real. Sam Walton hadn't been deterred by Kmart's dominance. And according to his autobiography, Made in America, Walton said that a lot of regional discounters were, quote, talking about ways to avoid competing with Kmart directly. I got a little mad and told everyone they ought to stand up and fight them. I made it clear we planned to. 
Another issue was that, by the late 1980s, many of Kmart's stores were considered outdated or in various states of disrepair. This was partly due to its decision to maintain a high dividend to shareholders, which reduced the amount of funds that were available to improve its stores. This was the exact opposite strategy that was used by Harry Cunningham, who had eliminated the dividend in order to fund the company's impressive growth. A few years before the last Kmart in our area closed down, my wife and I noticed the store's outdated displays, worn out look, and the fact that no music was playing over the loudspeakers. It felt like a scene out of Dawn of the Dead. And when we checked out, we noticed the outdated POS terminals. They looked like they were from the early 90s. A third issue was that, through the 80s and early 90s, Kmart had used precious resources to acquire other companies, such as Sports Authority, Builder Square, Walden Books, and Borders. On top of that, they also acquired a large interest in Office Max. By purchasing all of these companies, management no longer had a 100% focus on the Kmart stores, which meant they didn't properly allocate the funds needed to remodel and update their deteriorating stores, as I mentioned earlier. By the early 90s, Kmart retired the Blue Light Special concept, which was first introduced in 1965, and began working on a new image. A new logo was created, and they also finally began remodeling their stores. 1992 saw them begin international expansion with stores in the Eastern European market, with the purchase of 13 stores in the former Czechoslovakia. Four years later, these stores were sold off. Kmart's profitability and sales peaked in 1992, which coincidentally was the same year that Harry Cunningham, Kmart's founder, passed away at 85. Even more of a coincidence was the fact that two other founders of the nation's most successful discount chains also died that year, Target's John Geis and Walmart's Sam Walton. After 1992, sales declined at Kmart. This was due to competition with Walmart and Target, and the rise of e-commerce also had quite an impact. Store closures soon followed, with an announcement in 1994 that 110 stores were slated to be closed. Unlike Walmart and Target, Kmart was behind on the times. It didn't invest in computer technology to manage its supply chain. By not keeping up with the current technological trends, its efficiency was much lower than its competitors. Another big issue was brand image. In the 1990s, Kmart had various store concepts, such as Super Kmart, Super Kmart Center, and Big Kmart. Though most of their regular stores were converted into Big Kmart stores during the late 90s and early 2000s, there was no coherent brand image. And without a brand image, Kmart failed to appeal to a specific target market. It seemed as if it wanted to appeal to everyone, which led Kmart to become bland and lack an image. And by trying to please everyone, Kmart simply couldn't compete with Walmart's focus on low prices or Target's trendier offerings. So not taking its smaller competitors seriously, a lack of brand image, investing in a slew of other chains rather than updating its current stores, and not investing in the right technology to manage supply chain logistics were just some of the main reasons that led to the collapse of Kmart. The final nail in the coffin was their slow adoption of e-commerce as shoppers began turning to online stores at an increasing pace. Despite selling off various businesses they had acquired, by early 2002, Kmart filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy protection. Around this time, Walmart had taken Kmart's place as the nation's second largest retailer. It was all downhill from there, with an Enron-like scandal involving Kmart's new leadership and subsequent closings of more stores and ensuing layoffs. Eventually, Kmart emerged as a subsidiary of the new Kmart Holding Corporation. During the bankruptcy process, much of Kmart's outstanding debt was purchased by ESL Investments, a hedge fund controlled by Edward Lampert. Shares of Kmart Holding Corporation began trading on the NASDAQ under the ticker symbol KMRT, with Lampert serving as chairman. Under his leadership and with his efforts to improve the company's balance sheet, Kmart posted its first profitable quarter in three years but the end was on the horizon. In a likely effort to repair its image, a new logo was unveiled in 2004, and that same year, it was announced that Kmart and Sears would merge in an $11 billion deal. Kmart Holding Corporation was then transferred to the new Sears Holding Corporation and was publicly traded under the ticker symbol SHLD. The shares of this new company were even touted by popular television pundit Jim Cramer on his show Mad Money. He had argued that the real estate owned by the company was worth far more than the market capitalization, but he hadn't anticipated the upcoming Great Recession and the retail apocalypse. Things went from bad to worse for Kmart, 
and everything fell apart in the 2010s. There were more Kmart store closures and liquidations, and Kmart's parent company, Sears Holding Corporation, underwent severe financial distress. To add insult to injury, Kmart was a victim of a data breach concerning customers' credit and debit card information. By 2017, it was announced that the very first Kmart location in Garden City, Michigan would be shuttered. And around this time, Sears Holdings admitted uncertainty regarding the survival of both Sears and Kmart. More and more stores closed, and sales continued to plummet. There were various reasons for this, such as the re-evaluation of their marketing strategy in 2017, which led them to halt all television ads for the crucial holiday season and instead focus primarily on internet marketing. The results were disastrous, and well, the inevitable happened. In 2018, Sears Holdings filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy, and there were more store closures, though over 200 Kmart stores were left open under the assumption that the company would survive the bankruptcy process. In 2019, Sears Holdings narrowly avoided Chapter 7 liquidation with a new deal with Lampert. But some of the company's unsecured creditors, including retail landlord company Simon Property Group, filed a motion to overturn the deal, insisting upon liquidation so the money that was still owed to them would be paid. In the end, the most lucrative parts of Sears Holdings were sold to Lampert, which allowed the remaining Kmart locations to survive. But most of these locations were sold to Transform Holdco, and the rest were liquidated to pay off creditors and it didn't take long for Transform Holdco to close more stores. Currently, there are three Kmart locations still operating in the US, though I've read that Kmarts in Australia are doing well. It's sad that a once iconic company has suffered such a disastrous fall. And as a former Kmart employee myself in the late 1990s, I fondly remember my time working for the company in one of its stores, which was located only a few miles away from the town where SS Kresge was born and raised. Kmart's long demise and subsequent collapse would have baffled most people who had stepped foot in their stores in most of the 20th century. Starting as a 5 and 10 cent store and becoming the leading discount retailer in the nation, it's hard to argue that SS Kresge and Harry Cunningham haven't left their mark on the world, influencing the largest retailers today. In the words of Walmart founder Sam Walton, Walmart wouldn't be what it is today without a host of fine competitors, most especially Harry Cunningham of Kmart who really designed and built the first discount store as we know it today, and who, in my opinion, should be remembered as one of the leading retailers of all time. So, what are your thoughts on the rise and fall of Kmart? Please let me know in the comments below. Also, if you'd like me to make a video covering another topic, or expand upon anything in this video, please be sure to add that as well. Thank you for watching.